Hi everybody, this is Jane, and today I want to do a review on American Gods. Now, I want to be very clear that I haven't re or reread the book for a really long time. I read it years ago, and while some of the stuff in this it was vaguely familiar, I'm not sure how closely it does follow the book. So I am reviewing this not as a reader who has a comparison to one of the books that they read and really enjoyed, but just as a viewer. So um, for anybody who doesn't know, this is about a guy named Shadow Moon who he just got out of prison and found out that his wife is dead. His wife was having an affair with his best friend and um, he's not really sure what to do with his life. And he gets recruited by this guy, Mr. Wednesday, as a bodyguard. And he soon realizes that he is involved in way more than he thought he was, and he's kind of in over his head because craziness is happening. Um, and that is pretty much an accurate description of this series. This series is the TV series. This is just series one, and I think it's eight episodes long. And it was really confusing. Uh, it took a while. It took a really long time, I felt like, for them to come to really explaining explicitly what the plot was. In the beginning, we're just kind of following Shadow around. We're getting to know different people, and Mr. Wednesday is, like, stopping in to meet different people, and they're all very weird. Uh, one person likes to murder cows, pigs. I don't remember what it is, but, like, we open with a scene of him killing a pig and complaining that the way that they kill pigs pigs or cows, whatever it is now, is not as effective as it used to be because now they just stun him with this thing and he wants to whap him in the head with a sledgehammer. I don't know. It's it, These people are crazy. Um, this series also, tons of violence, tons of nudity. Um, and even if that's something that you normally handle, like this is a lot. We watched Game of Thrones, me and my boyfriend, together and like this was more of the violence and sex than I would say Game of Thrones if not I would say more or at least a different like more uncomfortable maybe like we were watching it and I think one thing that this does that maybe Game of Thrones does is there's just so much penises so so many penises <clears throat> and 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 like I think Game of Thrones you're still female anatomy and I don't know why it's more uncomfortable for me to watch something with my boyfriend and there be penises all over the screen. But there are. So be warned with that if you decide that you want to watch this. Language, gore, sex, all of it's in here. Um, for pacing, we did have a few issues. It There's a lot of times where you're going and you're going and you're kind of like, what is the point? What is happening? And if you are not really, it was hard to be really invested in any of the things happening, um, and all the craziness is going on around you. So I kind of had mixed feelings about that. Like, I felt like we needed a little more explanation to keep things engaged, <clears throat> especially if you've never read the book, or like my boyfriend has never read the book, and I don't remember much of the book, so I remembered the basic plot line, but up until close to the end, I didn't feel like that was really explained that that's what was going on. And the mystery wasn't, the mystery of what is happening wasn't interesting enough to take me through the story. Um, there was an, a place where it got really, really slow and my boyfriend actually said, he's like, if things don't get better in the next episode, I'm done because I'm just kind of bored. So there were spots where it gets slow. There's also a lot of spots where it is so over the top that you're just like, I'm going to follow you here, but I hope that you make it worth my while. And usually it is, but sometimes it gets a little crazy. Um, there was a little bit of a cliffhanger at the back, at the last episode, but to be honest, like I'm not sure this is something that will stay with me enough that by the time season two comes out on DVD, because we don't have stars or whatever channel this is normally on, um, it does stay stars down here, but I don't, I thought it was shown on some other um stream uh, video streaming channels I don't know but yeah by the time this comes out with the next season I'm not sure I'm going to be invested enough to watch the next one 
There are some really cool things that they do and some really cool characters, although the formatting in the early part of the season I actually enjoyed a lot more than later. The first few episodes and a couple episodes, they had like a a description, if you will, of or a story. They tell you a story of how a god got to America. So like you see gods being brought from different countries over with the people. Because in this, the idea is that gods exist because people believe in them. So, um, for instance, you have a slave boat that brings over um, Anansi, the spider god, and he incites a riot on the boat. And you had a lot of really cool stuff with that, but... Um, some of the episodes didn't really have something equivalent to that, and I really enjoyed those, although it also could be confusing, and sometimes they lasted a little too long. Um, one in particular, they have not a god, but a leprechaun king, and it is such a long, drawn-out story how the leprechauns get there. And, like, there is a leprechaun who's a main character in this, so it's kind of his background, but I didn't want to use basically a whole episode to hear about this character who does, I mean, he's there, he's comedic, but he doesn't seem like he's that important for the plot. And the way he got there just was so long and drawn out. So long and drawn out. So I do have mixed feelings about this. I would say this is about a three out of five for me. Um, I enjoyed it as far as it was interesting mentally, and there was a lot of cool stuff in it, but it was way more gory and way more sexual than it needed to be. And again, I haven't read the book in a while. I talked to one of my friends who's reading the book and she's like, no, no, the book's really graphic too. So it could be that I just don't remember that part of the book. Um, but yeah, it seems a little over the top. And then just some of the things that happen are over the top in a way that's more, I, I hate to say zany because I feel like I've got to be careful with that word, but just weird. And I don't remember the book being that weird. Now, mind you, when I read the book, it was more than 10 years ago. I remember really liking the book, but I don't, and I remembered like the basic plot, but I didn't remember all the other craziness. So yeah, if you've never read the book, go into this cautiously because it's kind of, I'd say it's really confusing and you know like I said I was watching it with somebody who had never read the book and he struggled with it a little bit um I think for him it was closer to like a two than a five he was watching it because I wanted to watch it and it wasn't terrible but it wasn't great um I also was excited to see Jillian Anderson because she's one of my favorite actresses and bummed that apparently this is the only season she's in so yeah, I guess that's all that I have to say about this. Um, I'm a huge fan of Neil Gaiman. I wanted to love this. I wanted this to be like a 5 out of 5. And I need to go back and read the book because I remember the book being amazing. So maybe my issue now is context. Because um, uh, this just felt kind of slow and drag along and I just at places wanted to get to the point. And I'm not sure if that's because they turned a book into a series or if the book was that way too. So yeah, if you have watched the video, if you have watched the first season of American Gods, I would love to hear what you think. Please comment below, like, and subscribe, and this is Jane, I'll talk to you next time. Bye.